As a result, several homeowners associations approached the Board of Mayor and Aldermen and asked the town to consider accepting private streets. At the direction of the Board of Mayor and Aldermen, an <coughs> ordinance was prepared that uh, basically opened a window of opportunity in the Municipal Code under the street section allowing for the Board of Mayor and Aldermen at the Planning Commission's recommendation to accept the private streets um, and that they be taken over by the town. The amendment had a sunset clause, so basically we turned around and then re-amended the ordinance to take that opportunity out. But a detailed study was conducted throughout the town on all the private streets, and Glen Abbey, Wyndham Hall, Turkey Creek Harbor, Ramsgate, and Shiloh all had private streets that were eventually taken over by the town. Um, the townhomes at Wentworth had one property owner that would not relinquish their interest in the private street, so they were told by the Board of Mayor and Aldermen, since they had submitted their application, that when um, they had 100% uh, the town would accept their street. The Colbert Turkey Creek Homeowners Association has requested that their streets be changed from public to private. Um, the Cove is bound by Sweetbriar, Woodland Trace, Farragut, Farragut View, and Stonecrest subdivisions. Uh, the street access is from Parkside Drive at the Calhoun's Abuelos um, Regal Cinemas intersection. Uh, the walking trail access internally to the subdivision is from Sonia Drive and the Sweetbriar, Woodland Trace, and Stonecrest subdivisions. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, past and future home purchasers in the town in the, the Cove at Turkey Creek can see um, what the area that they are driving through to get to their subdivision is. Um, so that, however, the common theme when the town received the requests for the, to accept private streets was that most often people were not aware of what that meant. That even if there were gates, they were not aware that a gate automatically signaled that it was a private street. Um, people often don't think about something, even if they are a seasoned home purchaser, um, they're not cognizant of certain things unless it is a problem they have run into in a previous home purchase. Um, and I think that, you know, so it's in some ways you're dealing with a first time home buyer for certain things, even if they are a seasoned home buyer, if it is a problem they are not cognizant of or are made aware of. When we talked about this at the May 19th Planning Commission, one of the issues was that folks expressed the concern that when patrons were leaving the cinemas, they were going into their subdivision and trying to find a way to Kingston Pike. Um, so the town went out and we posted a no outlet sign and we took traffic counts before we posted the no outlet sign and then after we posted the no outlet sign. Um, per the um, ITE traffic and ITE stands for the Institute of Traffic Engineers. A traffic generation manual, detached single family homes generate on average 10 trips per day. That is a standard number that when traffic engineers do traffic impact studies, that is the number they used for um, single family homes. Um, obviously when a house is under construction or there's a lot of roofing work <coughs> going on as we're experiencing now in town with everybody having their roofs done, they generate more traffic than normal because you have workers coming to the site. Um, below, in your memo, I included the pre-no outlet sign installation and the post-no outlet sign installation. Um, the traffic counts did go down slightly, um, but the traffic counts in either case aren't out of line given the number of homes that are actually in the subdivision. They're very much in line with uh, the number of homes. Um, it's also very normal on weekends for traffic counts to be higher uh, for a variety of reasons. You can think about your own activity patterns on the weekends. You have more free times, you have company, you, you know, you're out and about doing more things. Um, and also open houses, that kind of thing, you generate more traffic as a result of that on weekends. <coughs> Excuse me. I included in your packet a copy of resolution PC 1111. Uh, that section 
is a, that resolution proposes amending Article 3 of the subdivision regulations, um, eliminating the um, public street requirement. Uh, as we talked about in May, some of the issues um, were is that there's no way you can ever say, well, we'll never, ever, ever take these over because that's not ever, ever, can never, ever, you know, that just isn't the case. Some things can always change. That's what's great about life. Things can always change. Um, but we also talked about different assets in the town, one of which was Bridgemore Subdivision, in that many of us feel Bridgemore Subdivision, the top of the hill, is really a community asset, a town Farragut asset, not just Bridgemore Subdivision asset. Um, I know that Jerry White has, has told me that they have numerous prom pictures and graduation pictures and everything taken in that subdivision. Um, and when you allow one subdivision to have private streets, then anybody would have the authority to request private streets. The other issue with it is our walking trail sidewalk network in that eliminating the streets as private or as public makes the whole network problematic from the legal point of view. Um, the resolution that I prepared for you this evening to consider um, is to amend the subdivision regulations to allow for um, private streets. I apologize that I didn't actually have a red line copy, but I couldn't get the Municode to work when I was working on your packet, so I, I do apologize for that. So I just kind of gave you a marked up copy and included the um, resolution. Uh, staff is recommending denial of this resolution, but I know that uh, the residents are here. There are several residents here. The applicant, um, Mr. Nixon, uh, serves as the spokesperson uh, for the applicant. and. Um, um, there's a lot to be discussed because I know several of you weren't around during the initial discussion, so you may have more questions. Applicant wish to speak now. Uh, Jim Nixon uh, with the uh, Cove uh, Property Owners Association. Uh, uh, we do have several of our residents here tonight. Uh, we've had. Uh, discussions and uh, meetings since the May meeting and uh, uh, we have quite a few people here tonight I think that w want to uh, comment on this um, uh, we had previously I think said that uh, we had a unanimous uh, uh, group that wanted to do this we have had some uh, uh, opposition within our own group so it's been a discussion it's been open and uh, uh, but I, all of our board members are here tonight and uh, uh, ready to answer questions or comments uh, on what we're trying to do and, and why we're trying to do it. Uh, you want me to? Well, I've got a question before you go much further. Yes. Um, so you say you have some opposition with that. Well, we, um, we've had one uh, homeowner group, one, one home, I believe, that has expressed reservations. And we have not had an opportunity to sit back down and meet with them, and we intend to do that. Uh, we owe them uh, some additional budget information, and uh, uh, we, we intend to deliver that uh, to the whole group, not only to uh, the uh, one home that uh, expressed reservations, but uh, we, we will, we're not running by them or are not trying to uh, uh, eliminate their views, but we will take that into account. The, we have not voted to do this as an association, and um, I mean we don't have the right to vote to do it since we don't have permission to do it. Uh, but but we do have, I believe, a consensus uh, among the homeowners uh, to do to vote for this, and we have a plan and a method of of establishing it and operating it over time. My question is going to just uh, affirm that y'all, based on the traffic count change and the reduction of about 20 percent, not only in, the, in those trips, and uh, the understanding, I guess, of some not being unanimous, you all are still going 
forward with your request. That's, so I, I sense from your comments already that that's, that's We would true. like to go forward with the request, and uh, uh, we, we understand that there's, uh, the subdivision is not built out and that uh, we saw the counting machines that were installed. And uh, uh, since that time, we've had uh, numerous issues with the wrong kind of traffic. I mean, I don't know how many are coming and going. We haven't seen the data that uh, Ruth has generated, but uh, uh, we don't have a copy of that. But uh, no matter how many, if one too many of the wrong ones get in there, then that's that's one of the things we're addressing and uh, we have some of that and uh, you made some really good comments last time ed uh, you know most of them did know that that could have been an issue when they purchased because it's adjacent to a commercial that was your comment adjacent to a commercial facility and uh, you know you might expect some of that but not to the level that we've experienced and uh you know, we, by the time we get the county police out there, you know, they're gone or uh, uh, we have had some uh, police activity. They've arrested some, uh, a drug dealer and, uh, and there's some other things that have happened on our street, but on our streets. But uh, uh, that's one reason, security, is why we'd like to, uh, to install the gates and, uh, and have the private streets. And the other is it's an amenity. And uh, a lot of uh, our homeowners have, have uh, second homes or, or other facilities where there are gated communities, and they're familiar with it, and they understand it. And I know Ralph has a, a vacation home up above Gatlinburg, and the gate never works. <laughs> no, it's never been turned on. <laughs> you know why? Why? Because they can't figure out how to get the emergency vehicles to get in there quickly. Yeah. There, 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 uh, there's two or three ways to handle that, and we're, we're familiar with those. And uh, the emergency vehicles uh, will either have an override or, or they'll be like most of the traffic lights that are being put up now. They'll, they'll automatically turn green when they go through. Um, and uh, uh, those systems are available now, and uh, uh, we, we would not install a, a gate that would... Uh, that would prohibit suppliers or uh, emergency personnel, police, or fire from gaining access whenever it was needed or desired. Residences are currently occupied. You know, um, people, guys, how many do we have? Uh, fi fi Fifteen, I believe. Uh, just recently uh, sold um, one house, and uh, there's. I believe uh, one house under construction and one house ready to go under construction. So we do have some activity now in the subdivision, which basically had no activity for the previous two years. How many lots? There are 74 lots, and the developer, which we're the developer, John Turley and I, we're the developers, and we have 40, I don't know, 40-something, low 40s left. And the rest of them are owned by people that intend to build or have built. Jim, I got a question for you. Yes. Uh, really, two questions. I, I'd have a hard time supporting it unless you had 100% unanimous consent from your homeowners. Because okay. there was, there was, all your homeowners went in, I assume, with the assumption that they were public roads. And so I think if there was going to be a change in the public right of way to a private right of way, I, I think it would be important. That 100 percent, and I, I'm not sure if you can if you can get to 100 percent. But let's say, assuming you can get to 100 percent, and assuming that this got forward momentum, how would you address the issue with the the walking trails? I, for a time, I lived off of um, off of uh, well, I've gone blank on the, the name and Cottage Creek around the way, and there's some, there's great mm -hmm. walking trail connectivity that ties Sweetbriar into your neighborhood, and then ties your neighborhood over into. Ruth helped me out with the neighborhood directly to the west. A Woodland Trace. Woodland Trace. Mm -hmm. And they're great walking trails, by mm -hmm. the way, especially if you live in that area. I mean, you, you, could, you could walk to movie theaters, et cetera. And how, what are your thoughts? How would you address those walking trails all of a sudden if, if these right-of-ways are no longer public right-of-ways? Same way we did over at Turkey Creek. Same way it's handled anywhere. It's, it's an it's a, uh, uh, easement granted to the town.